فعاش القلب وإخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير Let's go to the issue of the dress code and dwell on it for a few moments Like I said moments ago we don't want to judge our sisters based on the pressure of the environment and society for them to show what they have when what they have was given by Allah. Your complexion given to you by Allah. Your build given to you by Allah. Your, the type of hair you have given to you by Allah. It is pagan to judge based on that. Totally pagan, unacceptable. So Allah says, in order to give you the honor, we ask you to conceal. That's it. In order to give you the dignity, let's pause. You might argue that, okay, this was a long time ago, before the Islamic period that they did that. I want to tell you, we've come back to the stage. Today, perhaps the pressure of society is worse than the pagan time. The reason I say this, at that time, they oppressed women with women knowing that they were oppressed. Today, they are, they are abusing female in a way that the females look forward to the abuse. That's what it is. They have, when they decided a long time ago, when they saw that we can no longer make use of the nude women to fulfill our lusts and desires to be paraded in front of us, they chose to do something more intelligent. They said to themselves, we will design clothing for them. We will make sure that we make it the in thing by promoting it in the media and by using whether it is movies or adverts or whatever else in order to promote what they are supposed to be doing in such a way that they consider it liberation to remove their clothing. So when they remove their clothing, they are now liberated. I remember in Africa, one of the leaders was commenting about how the world has forced women through, you know, brainwashing them to remove their clothing and consider that liberation. And he said, we in Africa, many years back before the colonialist came in, we used to wear feathers and skins to cover our private parts. And we used to move around with spears and daggers. And here comes the colonialist and tells us that, you know what? This is backward. This is really backward. It's unacceptable. You people are bushmen. They called us bushmen. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. They called us bushmen. And they said, you people are not even clothed. And they came through with beautiful clothing, to be honest, that covered the female and even gave her a Victorian cap, which had a net. Subhanallah. They covered her so beautifully. And now the same African is saying, why? We were liberated. You took away our liberation because according to you now, you have changed everything and you are now going back to where we were by saying you go back and put on the skin and put on the feathers and just cover the front and the back and you are liberated. So we were already there. You took us out of civilization and you brought us into degradation. And now, according to you, you're taking us back to civilization. But that's not the case. It means there is something sinister. It means a brain and a mind that is a thinking mind will actually go and ponder and will say definitely something is wrong here. Something is wrong. Daughters are special. You're not supposed to be nude just for the desires of men. And people say, no, I'm doing it for myself. No, you're not. Cannot be. I'm doing it for myself. No, I tell you why. If you put on two pounds of weight, you will cover. <laughs> Trust me, it's a fact. It shows that you're enslaved, total enslavement. If there is a small blemish on your head, you won't go out. You need something. Make sure, even if it means 30 minutes and it means 300 ringgit, one pimple, worth it, worth it. At least when I go out, there we are. You know? I remember when I first came across this beauty camera. You know, they have a beauty camera. It takes off your, all your blemishes, gone, you know? <laughs> so first came across the beauty camera 
And I thought to myself, you know, if women, maybe even men, could actually move around with a little screen in front of them, just so that when you look, you can just see a filtered image already, they would do so. It might happen one day, subhanAllah, you see little screens walking. That is how enslaved we are. We are embarrassed because of the normal, natural pimples that we have. Do you see? We are embarrassed because of that. Why? Because we are enslaved to a certain extent. It's not bad to look good, subhanAllah. But within the limits, remember, why are you doing it? Allah says, don't do it for the opposite sex because it won't stop. If you do it for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for your spouse, for example, for a good purpose, you know, you want to feel good, you're not going to show it to the world. Perhaps, yes. But if a person is doing it for the opposite sex, it is called tabarruj. Tabarruj meaning you are too special to engage in that. You're not allowed to engage in tabarruj. Tabarruj to show off to other men something that's not even theirs. Make them wish, you know, may Allah forgive us. For what? And like I said, Allah sometimes subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these beautiful rulings in such a way that if we were to ponder over them, we would realize that it's a gift for other sisters. You might be gorgeous. You might be, mashallah, the most, you know, good looking, so pretty, everything you can show. Wait, wait, look at the others around you. Perhaps you are putting pressure on them. Perhaps you are a reason why their home is breaking because now the men are becoming used to a certain figure that they are being bombarded with all along. Daughters are too special for that. If you want to contribute to building their homes, you need to also dress appropriately. That's a fact. If you may not have understood what I said, let me say it in a different way. Sometimes what happens is, a person who may not be up to the tip top shape that the world wants to see would be looking at those who are exposing themselves and burning in her heart to say, Wallahi, she doesn't know what she's doing in my marriage and in my home just by exposing. I don't have that hair. I don't have this. I don't have that. So what does she do? She will go to have an operation in order to change the creation of Allah. She will go because she's dissatisfied. She's not happy. She will go and try and change her shape completely and her face. And she will go in for plastic surgery and she will still not be satisfied. And she will go in for so much more just because there are a few who are, mashallah, gifted by Allah. But they are showing that all to create a trend and an environment of enslavement of the female. That's what it is, enslavement. Take a look at these products that we have in the market, beauty products. I'm not saying they are bad, don't get me wrong. You may want to use those that are permissible, yes. Like I said, you have every right to be looking, you know, presentable and good according to you. But why are you doing it? That's the question, that's all. The amount of money being used by people to try and change their complexion, go and Google it, check it, is unacceptable. Why? What is so bad? And this is why Islam has made it clear that your complexion is chosen by Allah. There is no virtue of a person coming from Africa over the one who comes from Arabia and vice versa, except by their closeness to Allah. So my sisters, my daughters, you are too special to be bothered about things that Allah has chosen for you.